morning, boys and girls. Welcome. And we are going to do schooled. We're going to do chapter 11. Once again, my plant has grown and I noticed it is hanging over my head. Hopefully it won't attack me while I read. Um, we're going to hear from Capricorn Anderson, his perspective, I think, about rescuing uh, the bus driver after his heart attack. Um, but the other thing we're probably going to notice is that the author allows us inside Cap's mind. How are his thoughts and feelings changing? The wonderful thing about Gordon Corman is that he gives us insight into all of the characters. And Cap is a dynamic character. That means he grows and changes. So pay attention to the markers that show how he's changing and how that might impact the climax of our story um, and what the author's message might be. Because all these things come together to help the reader really get engaged and have empathy for that main character. Here we go. I don't think I ever would have learned to understand regular school if it hadn't been for trigonometry and tears. It was Sophie's favorite show. I watched it with her every day after school when I didn't have something else to do, like being under arrest. There was no TV at Garland, and it wasn't just because our generator barely had enough power to run the lights and refrigerator. Rain, said television, was a vast wasteland and lowered our standard until we couldn't tell the difference between bad and good. I would never disagree with Rain, but I thought TNT was fantastic. When I watched it, everything around me seemed to disappear, and the whole world was happening on that little screen. Those people were so real, with true-to-life problems and big decisions that had to be made. I kept wishing that the characters had someone like Rain to turn to in times of trouble. But they didn't. They had their parents, who were even more messed up and confused than the kids were. It was a perfect symbol for life outside Garland. Huge, complicated, and full of hidden traps and pitfalls. Plus, every now and then the program stops and the TV tells you about all the great things you can buy, like a miracle cream that makes it scientifically impossible to get a pimple. If it hadn't been for the show, I would have been really bewildered by the huge fuss everybody was making over driving one little school bus less than five miles. The adults on TNT were always going bananas over something. So I wasn't surprised when the police, the superintendent, the principal, the bus company owner, and Mrs. Donnelly all took turns screaming at me. They even made rain call for the, from the rehab center. And gosh, it was good to hear her voice. I'm supposed to talk some sense into you, she told me. But what I really want to say is congratulations. You did the right thing. The police don't think so. Typical, she chuckled. Getting hung up on the numbers of your, on your birth certificate when you probably saved a life. They made me lie on my stomach while they cuffed my hands behind my back, I complained. Does that bring back memories, she exclaimed. Every time I protested the Vietnam War, I wound up in the same position. Those were the days. So I love the contrast between Rain and the typical parent today, that she's all excited that her grandson um, rescued someone and that she does remember protesting and being arrested. Like She's not at all flapped by this. It was horrible. Don't worry, Cap, she said comfortingly. I'm getting stronger every day. In no time at all, we'll both be back to the sanity of Garland. Just the thought of it warmed me all over. Maybe we could get a stronger generator so we could watch trigonometry and tears there. I knew someone as smart as Rain would appreciate it if she'd just give it a chance. I'd been doing Tai Chi since I was five. Rain was my teacher. She explained that if you concentrate to the point where your mind and body become one, all outward awareness melts away. It was the first day after I drove Mr. Rodrigo to the hospital. I was halfway through my routine when there, performing the moves beside me, was the girl Naomi. I recognized her instantly. She was one of the 54 names I managed to learn so far. Extend your fingers, I whispered. The energy should begin in your core 
and flow out through your extremities. She made the adjustment. Thanks. She turned out to be a natural, but I had to cut the workout short. Zach had scheduled another press briefing for the morning. Hard experience had taught me to leave extra time to find the room. Well, uh, goodbye. Wait, she exclaimed, but I have to go to a... I know, she looked unhappy. Maybe she understood how difficult these briefings were for me. How I could never answer any of the questions, yet the reporters kept asking more and more. Cap, there's something I need to tell you. I assumed she was going to give me directions to the journalism lab. Instead, she said, Watch out for Zach and Lena. Watch out for all of us. We're not as nice as we pretend to be. You're nice, I told her. You're the nice one, Cap. I just want you to think about that statement right now and that concept of contrasts and contradictions. If I were doing this with my reading journal right now, I would stop and jot that quote and explain why it's important. And she ran into the school, leaving me wondering if I would ever understand people outside Garland or if I even wanted to try. I was a little late for the briefing because no one had heard of the journalism lab which turned out to be just an ordinary classroom. Even more surprising, in addition to the usual reporters, Zach, Lena, and Daryl, there were at least 20 kids seated at desks. Where did you learn to drive a school bus? Came the first question from a dark-haired boy in the second row. Nowhere, I said honestly. Then I realized that this could be a chance to learn someone's name. And you are Trent Davidoff. I took out a small notepad and wrote it down. I usually drive a pickup truck. That's why I had a little trouble on the corners. How did you know Mr. Rodrigo was having a heart attack? Queried the girl next to Trent. And your name is? I prompted. Caitlin Rankin. I wrote that down too. I couldn't be sure it was a heart attack, but he was lying on the floor unconscious, and that can't be good. A boy near the back spoke up. What did the police say to you? He added. I'm Trevor Marduk. I scribbled it at the bottom of the page as I recalled the arresting officer's exact words. He said, keep your nose clean, or next time you're looking at juvie. Didn't you explain about Mr. Rodrigo, asked Caitlin? No. I blew my nose and wiped it very carefully. So again, to me that's hysterical because that would be incredibly disrespectful, but yet the officer had said, keep your nose clean, and Cap right now is very literal. Zach was looking annoyed, which was odd. After all, these press briefings had been his idea in the first place. He raised a hand. Is it true that you haven't even started planning the Halloween dance? The dance again. The entire entrance foyer was taken up with a floor-to-ceiling poster about it. There was even a picture of me with a dialogue room coming out of my mouth saying, Questions? Ask me. It was probably unrealistic to hope that nobody would. Yes, it's true, I admitted. Aren't you worried that you won't be ready when the time comes? He persisted. I don't know anything about parties, I said honestly. I only know 57 people, including you guys. Luckily, the bell rang, saving me from having to answer any more questions. But as we headed into the corridor, Trent approached me. You know, if you're looking for party music, my cousin's bar mitzvah had this DJ. The guy was amazing. Even the blue hair crowd was getting down with the hip hop moves. I frowned. How about the people with regular hair? Kids were going nuts, Trent assured me. They loved it. I thought of something Rain once said back in the 60s when Garland was a working commune. The biggest jobs went to the people who were best qualified to handle them. Why should I make decisions about a party when I'd never been to one? I faced Trent. You should look after the music. He was amazed. You're putting me in charge of hiring a DJ? He asked breathlessly. Not in charge. Authority is a power trip. A community thrives when each member does what he or she is best at. Your strength is the music. Trent nodded. But how do I pay the guy? 
It's a shame that money has to enter into everything I lamented. Don't worry about that, Caitlin jumped in. The music must have a bud whoops, the school must have a budget for the dance. She turned to me. Right? I had absolutely no idea. Rain used cash to buy supplies for the commune, but I had never even held a dollar bill in my hand. We believed that money crazed mindset was a big part of what was wrong with the world. So I said what Caitlin and Trent seemed to expect to hear. Right. I hoped it was the correct answer. So I think the author wants us to start thinking about that. That seems important to me. I hope that you notice how his thoughts and feelings are changing. Okay? Um, it's fascinating to see his transformation as we read the pages. I mean, he's now addicted to a teenage soap opera called Trigonometry and Tears. So tomorrow we'll hear about Sophie Donnelly and her perspective on everything. And you know how charming Sophie Donnelly is. So we'll have fun with that. Take care. Bye.